That's what they call rocking and rolling at all means. So, all right, all right. Well, good morning. I want to welcome everyone here this morning. And uh, I guess if there's, we'll just start if there's any announcements. I didn't even look. Gordon, was there any there? Yeah. Good morning. Just a couple of things to review. Um, we are collecting items for Heartland Pregnancy Care Center. There are two um, baskets or containers at either entrance that you may use. Um, we have some strollers. If you notice down there at the first entr or the fellowship entrance, that is, I mean, that is fabulous. They're going to absolutely faint when they see the things that are being brought. Uh, <coughs> we still have our, the back end of our vehicle is still full of things. We're going to have to take two this year to get everything that needs to go, which is fabulous. But we're still collecting through next Sunday. So <coughs> um, please bring your items. If you need me to pick up something, I would be happy to do that. Just get a hold of me, and, and I will come to your door and pick those up for you. Also, um, Super Bowl Sunday. Anybody know when Super Bowl Sunday really is? The 13th. Yes, at some point in time, they moved it to the second Sunday. I don't know. I don't keep up with it. Anyway. So if you want to bring your items on the first Sunday of February, I don't care. <coughs> but we'll collect them on the second Sunday, which is actually the 13th. So if you want to bring items for the food bank, that would be fabulous. And not only food items, but also toilet paper, dish soap, laundry soap, paper towels, anything that you use in your home that you believe is of value and of necessity, those items are welcome as well. So first and second Sunday in, in uh, February, you can bring those items. On February 6th coming up, uh, on, on the coming events, you'll see it says Victory Lane. It's actually Victory Village. Uh, Pastor Bill Cal will be coming. And uh, just to kind of get Philly in a little bit on that, this was actually something that was scheduled clear back uh, with Pastor Jeff. And, and, uh, and then COVID time came along and all that stuff. And, and uh, so it got rescheduled clear till now. But uh, Pastor Bill Cal will be coming. Uh, this is a school that's located east of Hutchinson, and uh, it's a school for, for troubled girls to help uh, in their situations, and uh, he'll be coming to share about that and preaching to us that Sunday morning. So there'll be more information coming about that, but wanted to share with that. And just to kind of let you know as far as things that are upcoming, uh, or maybe I'd back up to last Monday, we had our, uh, uh, if you listen carefully, we had our PST at the ACFH, uh, that in other words, we had our pastor search team met at the only church <laughs> fellowship hall, and uh, kind of going back to when I taught school, we had all these acronym letters. But uh, pastor search team met, and just to kind of fill you in, keep you updated on what's happening, uh, we are looking into the process now of uh, getting an interim pastor. Uh, that's one of the things that's highly recommended, and uh, we're looking at doing that as we continue our pastoral search. Uh, if you think about that, there's some, there's some real advantages. You have a consistent pastor. You have pastoral care if things come along, and uh, so we're looking at, at, at that, uh, and we'll, we'll be continuing to meet in that way. But just to let you know what's happening upcoming, we have our own uh, Pastor Clint here preaching for a couple of Sundays, and uh, he'll be finishing out January. Uh, Pastor Bill Cowell will be coming in first week of February, and then to finish out February through the first week of March will be Rob Schmutz back here again. Uh, be kind of doing a revival service in a four-part series on the signs of Jonah, uh, and that'll be coming up through February and first Sunday of March. And uh, just to kind of also fill you in, Kevin's going to fill us in on uh, something else we were discussing at the pastoral search team. So one of the recommendations that um, is part of the pastor search team's process, um, this came out from some um, information that we've been receiving, is a kind of a congregational survey. So hopefully you've been given one as you came in or had been passed around. Does anybody need one that didn't get one so far? Okay, so basically what this is, is you can look at it in, oh, in two ways. One would be if I were searching for a church, what would, what would 
be the important things that I would be looking for in that church, okay? Or in this case, when we are, um, when we are looking at uh, selecting a pastor at some point here in the future, there will be things that we're going to probably be telling our pastor these are the things that we find to be important in our church, okay? So what we're wanting you to do is uh, take, I know there's a lot of them on here, but um, there, take five of these topics that you feel are the most important to you. And not only choose five of them, but if you would, mark the box, but then somewhere like right close to it uh, that we can see plainly, would you please try and rank them if possible? I know that can be a little difficult, but if you would please do that. We are going to be handing these out for a few Sundays because we want as much input as we possibly can. But we're going to be taking that then and then compiling some of this information. It's going to be helpful in several ways for us, but uh, largely in part will be as we get this information, we have some more information to give to our potential pastor that we'll be interviewing. Uh, jumping real back real close or real quickly, Rod, if you don't mind, on the interim pastor. Yeah. These pastors are really an amazing group of men, or pe I won't say men, people that they are, they are ministers. And what they have done is they have received a calling from God specifically to help churches that are in need such as ours. And so they, they will make commitments based on what the church's desire is, and that's part of the process we'll be talking with, uh, with this group with is depending on what our church perceives our need is for a time frame, they will literally contract with churches to preach for that, or not to preach, to be our pastor for that long of a period of time. And, and one of the most important parts I'm seeing out of this is the pastoral care portion of it. You know, we have great people that have been filling our pulpit and speaking, but there have been numerous times over these last several months, quite honestly, where you know, we, we, don't, we can't provide the kind of care that people need from time to time. So this pastor will actually move to our community, probably not in all of me specifically, but they will actually move here for that contracted time. Part of our process will be to help them find a place to live during that time. And so they will be our pastor. They have to, they have to agree, as does the church uh, have to agree, that they cannot then become our permanent pastor. It is specifically a calling that these guys do for a specific period of time to help churches such as ours. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up a little bit. It's amazing what these people are willing to do, but they, the, the ones that do this are literally called by God into full-time ministry, but not in a church. It is to help people, help churches such as ours. So I think that's pretty cool. Be in prayer about this. You don't have to do it yet today. If you would like to hand it back in, I can't remember, Don. Is there a box back there yet? No, give it to Don. <laughs> All right, uh, Don, Rod, um, let's see who, Dan, Dennis, um, so anyway, we'll do this for several for several weeks. We'll try and get maybe a container back there to help uh, to get them put into. But if you would please, five up up to you don't have to do a five, but up to five items, and then please rank them if you would. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Uh, man, I'm gonna call you to rally here. Our beast feast. We are gonna send our clipboard back around. Uh, <clears throat> Our proposed date that we had for March 26th it was is already taken for a, a quail and limited banquet. So we're going to look at proposed dates, and I'm asking you guys and gals what would work for us to commit to. So also, when this goes around, just write on it whatever you need to on dates. Uh, men for the meat and maybe pounds, that would be helpful if we could put that on this list as well. So... There will be no men's group Wednesday. Uh, we'll, we'll meet again the following week. We've got another announcement. The Florence Fire Department is having a pancake feed February 6th, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Florence Gym, Florence, Kansas. And a free will donation will be taken and we'll put this back on the bulletin board 
So I had to jump down real quick and put a, a sign-up sheet on the clipboard as well. So there are two sign-up sheets, uh, sheets on the clipboard. Make sure you turn it over, sign up for the Beast Feast. But also the other one that's going around is for sign-ups for uh, meals again for youth group. Uh, the new kids that came are sticking around. So we're, we're uh, between 25 and 30 people right now. So uh, if two people can, uh, can jointly sign up for uh, each Wednesday and uh, cover that down, that would be amazing. If we uh, can't or if uh, you would rather donate to the youth group to cover for uh, uh, pizzas or whatever that we do for the, those Wednesdays, that would be much appreciated. Uh, also, men, uh, just uh, heads up, this weekend is the Men's Encounter. So if you've been thinking about signing up, please do. Uh, we don't have a sponsor this time around going. I don't think we do. Yeah. We don't have a sponsor going this time around. Uh, so if you do sign up, please, please tell me or Clint that you have signed up. There are some things that servers have to get ready for you. Uh, so please let us know that you have signed up. Uh, I will be at pre-launch on Thursday uh, to help with that and then help with some uh, post-encounter teachings. So uh, we're still involved. We're just not able to go with you this time and be your server. But there are plenty of men that do go that uh, have the ability to serve you. So please, please let us know if you have signed up for that. Uh, also, uh, men, uh, if uh, I gave my presentation last week on the Conquer series. If you've been uh, thinking about that, please get with me. We'll be starting here really, really soon. Uh, so uh, that's all I got for you. Guess we'll move to birthdays. Any birthdays? In January. Oh, got one coming up. Maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> you probably got more than. <laughs> so Betty comes up and tells me she doesn't have any sense as she stuffs in a paper bill. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it's funny what you hear up here. How about any anniversaries? In January. I don't see any. Too cold, I suppose. All right. Well, this morning, yesterday, Dan, he asked me, he said, well, Clint, what's the message going to be about? And I, I said, well, it's, we're going to start at the, at the beginning of the Bible, and we're going to go to the end. So be ready. Yeah, be, be ready in 20 minutes or less, right? And Scott's back there thinking, oh, no. But Gordon's got a lot to read, so when we get ready to stand for that part, you guys be ready to stand, all right? So... All right, well, I think we're ready to, to no, we're going to have a prelude. We're going to have a prelude. Just, I ask that um, anybody here just calm our hearts, calm our minds, and, and open our hearts and open our minds this morning for the word. And it's all right to be excited for that, too.
this time we'll have our call to worship. If you'll follow in unison. As followers of Christ, we are called to bring a hopeful understanding of our world, declaring that God called the created universe good. We are called to bring this hope in God with us, declaring that God makes all things new again. Jesus taught that we should love God and one another. So let's join together in our love of God to worship and give thanks. Amen. Good morning. As they walk off talking between themselves. It is good to see you. Welcome to Alney and those of you who are online as well. It is good to have everyone here. I walked out this morning and it was actually warmer than it was yesterday. So spring is coming, Lynn. Yes, I do too. I am so done with cold. Ready to have a little warmth here. But it is warm here um, and it is a time to worship and, and uh, praise the Lord. From Romans 6, 19 through 22. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life.
people said. Amen. From Psalm 24, 7 through 9. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Seven, nine through 12. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name.
Lord, we thank you that we can come together today in this beautiful atmosphere that you provided, that we can come and praise and worship you. Today, be with Clint and open our minds and our hearts to the message he has for us. Help us, us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now we have children's church, or children's moments, I'm sorry. <laughs> Me. Turn off the mic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. How are y'all today? Good. I brought some stuff that we're going to talk about today. You want to see what I brought? Okay. Can you peek? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what's in here. Oh, a stick. A stick. Yeah, a stick. What about this? What's this? Hot oh. wheel. Yeah, Hot Wheels car. <coughs> you do? I bet. Rock. A rock. rock. Yeah. A dead rock. A dead. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess rocks are dead, aren't they? Okay, how about this? A ring. Yeah. Whatever. It has a star on it. It has a star on it. Yeah, it's not quite a wedding, wedding ring, but it is a shiny, pretty ring, isn't it? Okay, so what I want to talk to you guys today about is a big word called value. Do you have you heard that word before? Value. Do you think you know what it means? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna see. <coughs> okay. So what I want you guys to think about is, if you had a dollar, and I was gonna sell you one of these things, which one would you pay me a dollar for? Which one do you like the most that you would want? You would like the rock? I like the like rock this is thing. cool. Oh, car, car. Oh, car, the car. I like this car. You car. would like this car. Thing? <laughs> Emma, what do you think? <coughs> a ring. Anybody? Josh, which did you say? Would you buy one of those? Which one? The stick? The stick? Okay. Well, you guys, you're interesting because you all picked different things, right? 
Why did you choose the car? Who who because chose the car? Because that's literally a one dollar and twenty four cents. <laughs> hey, that is pretty much true. Matthew has a good concept of value right there. Okay, okay, that's a good answer. Also, you can play with this, right? It's a lot of fun. So that might be a good okay. reason. How about this? And okay. And this is zero dollars. You can no, break I can pay rock, you. Can break zero dollars. Fish. You can break that rock. You can you break can anything. Break that, but not in me. <laughs> okay. Well. I, I like to. What did you, Wes? Why did you pick the rock? Because it's zero dollars. Because it's zero dollars. <laughs> okay. It's that last rock. <laughs> what do you like about it? It's red. It's red. It, it's pretty, isn't it? You love rocks? Yeah, I, like I, I get that. That's I a good like reason. Ring. You love the ring? And I like the so you ball. would pay me a dollar for the ring. What do you love about it? What makes it worth a dollar to you? <laughs> Two dollars <laughs> even. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. Because Ooh. why? Because you think it's pretty? <coughs> would you wear that on your finger? Do you think it would look nice on your finger if you wore the ring? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good reason. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Sorry, I'm going to leave that right there. Okay. Yeah, the stick. I was surprised that somebody... <laughs> I was surprised anybody would pick the stick, but you would like the stick, huh? Yeah? You'd play with it? What would you do with the stick? Make a weapon out of it. Make a weapon out of it. Oh, man. Well, if you need the protection, that might not be a bad idea. I have tons of weapons at home. You do? I made them. You're a safe guy. Okay. All right. Well, I want to read a verse to you here out of the Bible that's about value. <coughs> and it comes from 1 Timothy 1 through 4. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read the parts I want you guys to hear, okay, that you can understand. So, <coughs> Paul says, I urge you then first that thanksgiving be made for all people. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So what I want you guys to get out of that verse is <clears throat> that God loves all of us, all of us the same, exactly the same. So when I... Excuse me, Wes. When I showed you all these different things, they all had different values to you guys. Some of them were more important than others, right? And I want to tell you, <coughs> like Waylon picked this stick, you know, and I didn't think anybody would pick that. But you know who would love this stick? A dog. My <laughs> dogs. You're right. They, they think this stick is a worth a lot because they could play with it. And you know, Donnie and I watch this show called Alone sometimes. And on that show, these people, they get dropped off in the middle of nowhere and they have to survive. And the first thing they do is they make a fire because then they can stay warm and they can cook their food and they can boil yeah. water. But a lot of times where they're at is really wet. Yeah, you, you, just like you do on the stove. It heats up your food. Oh, but they don't have dry wood sometimes, so they would probably pay a lot of money for a dry stick. To them, this stick would be very valuable. Um, <clears throat> this rock is valuable to me because when my kids were little, they would find pretty rocks outside in different places, and they would bring them home. And that made it valuable to me. It made it special. And so I would put them in a special place at home and keep them. Can I keep that one? <laughs> Can you that one? Yes. Okay, and then this ring isn't very expensive. It's worth a little more than $2, but not much. But this has special value to me because I was shopping with my daughter, Allie, when I got this ring. And every time I look at this ring, I think about that time that we went shopping together, and that was a fun time. So that's very special, too. Oh, <coughs> and this car has no value to me. It was just <laughs> one of the many toys that my kids had growing up, and so this doesn't have any value to me. But what I want you guys to realize is that to God, each
each of us are very special to him in our own way, and he loves us all the same amount. You know, sometimes we can think, well, if somebody's a really good football player or basketball player, he's really good at sports, well, you know, maybe he's extra special. You know, God would love him extra, but that's not true. God loves us all the same. And even people, there may be people that we think of in life like this stick that we don't understand what the value is. Maybe they're not as smart or maybe they're not nice. Maybe they've done some things in their lives that, you know, we would think were not good. But God still loves that person just as much as he loves us. And you know why that is? No, you're right, because he made us. He made each and every one of us, and this verse tells us that he wants every one of us to know him and choose him to be our Savior so that we can go to heaven and be with him someday. So just wanted to tell you guys that, that God loves you all the same, and you're all very special to him. Okay, let's pray about that, okay? Dear Lord, we thank you so much. You give us every opportunity to choose you, Lord, and I pray that these children and each one of us here today will choose you. Lord, we thank you that you love us and you created us to be here, to be in this place, to be on this earth, and you made everything that we need. And Lord, thank you so much for that unending love, for forgiving us for our sins, and for showing us that we mean more to you that you sent your son to die on the cross for us and you paid a hefty price. So we thank you, Lord, for these blessings and for your love. And we pray now as we go from here that we will remember that and keep it in our hearts our whole lives, Lord. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. And then there's some treats back here for you guys. And maybe Donnie can help me hand those out. Oh, they might be downstairs, actually. <laughs> At this time, the kids and we'll go to Children's Church and the nursery. And <clears throat> we're going to have our offering next. Um, there's offering plates at the back of the church. You can give online or <clears throat> you can mail it in. <coughs> Pray with me for offering. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can come together and we have the opportunity to give back with our tithes and offerings. Bless this for you may see fit. And uh, thank you that we have the opportunity to give back just a minute portion that you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
will now have a moment to share our joys and concerns. I've got a couple up here this morning. Um, first one is thank you for your prayers from, for Jenea. It's not, sub, not a broke ankle. It's just down stretches. So we count that as a joy. But probably also continued prayers. And another joy. It says, Jet Allen was born Tuesday morning. Jeff and Tammy are great grandparents. Huh? Oh, I did read that wrong. <laughs> Jeff and Tammy are grandparents. Wanda is a great grandparent again. <laughs> is what it says. So being a grandparent is just great. So that's that's that that is a joy. Are there any others that anyone would like to share this morning? Those of you that are have, uh, on the prayer texting chain have received a text this week about baby Hadley. And I wanted to, there was, there was more than what I sent out, of course. And I, so I want to give you an update on, on the information that was uh, given to me. Um, so I'll just read what I received and uh, hope that that'll help you understand what's been going on and and uh, I will say that things are improving there so as far as the uh, summary goes but so okay so they did a sleep study earlier this week uh, and she failed fantastically I thought that was an odd way to say that but anyway it says a bad score is between 10 and 15 she scored 150 Okay, they diagnosed her with obstructive sleep apnea and put her on oxygen, which got her to a 100 the next night. Her stats were all over the place last night. Having to breathe. They found palms incredibly enlarged, almost entirely blocking the airway. So they're finding answers. We thank God for that. And then... Uh, after that, the, you know, of course, I had sent out that they were going to the to to operate and install a breathing tube, which they did, and all that. So um, that is good news. She goes on to say, Hadley came off the ventilator last night, and that would be Friday night uh, at 10:30. She tolerated feeds well, so they also took her off the IV after getting to cuddle with Kaylee, her mother. She then slept for five and a half hours with no apnea episodes. So praise the Lord for that. So things are getting better. Uh, keep praying. Uh, she's a ways to go yet. But uh, and uh, I know many of you have asked, who is baby Hadley? <laughs> Be quite honest, I don't know her ver uh, at all either. Uh, but uh, Terry Bullock has been sending me this information. It is very uh, apparently, she's close to, to that family and, and such. So uh, keep praying. Uh, she needs your prayers and, and continued support. So I wanted to give you that update. Are there any others? Okay. Scott and Brandy Smith, I know, are still ill. And uh, keep them in our prayers. Scott, I yesterday reached out to him. He said something about it. maybe it was a little bit better yesterday. Um, so I'm sure it's day to day. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Dear Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity, and when we just love to pray to you, Lord, and just um, all that you you give us, Lord, and the, and the ability to pray to you, Lord. We just thank you for that. Lord, we bring to you this morning joys of, uh, of new grandparents and great-grandparents. And like I said, God, it's just a true blessing, Lord. We, we pray for, for the parents, Lord, and, and, and just new life. We just lift, that, lift the whole family up to you this morning, Lord. And, um, it's funny how sometimes joys become concerns, Lord, but that... They'll always seek you for guidance. 
as their family grows, Lord. Lord, we also have a, a joy and a, and a concern for Janaea, Lord, that um, things may not be as severe, but that still doesn't make all the pain go away. Lord, we pray that her treatments continue to help her, Lord, and that we just continue to pray for her, Lord, and um, that she be able to be healed like you make her stronger than she was before. Lord, we lift up baby Hadley this morning, Lord, and we know how important prayer is, Lord, and, and if this is an example, Lord, of, of maybe we don't know her directly, Lord, but we can pray for her, Lord, and we see results of your mighty hand, Lord, and we pray for diagnosis for her, Lord, and uh, continued treatments for her, Lord, that uh, you give the doctors and the medical staff the ability to to correctly diagnose and to help heal her, Lord, that you'll use them. Lord, we pray for her parents, Lord, and um, we know that the the weariness and, and stress that comes with that and the concerns that they have, Lord, that we just lift them up, that um, perhaps they can both be there, Lord, and support each other, Lord, but not, Lord, that you just you just comfort them. And give them strength, Lord. Lord, we pray for um, for all of our family that's not here this morning, Lord, and for various reasons, Lord. But we lift up the ones that have our, have an illness this morning, Lord, and and just cannot come, Lord. We just pray that um, you give them the strength and the power to to beat whatever they're they're fighting, Lord. Lord, it's, it's weird times that we live in, Lord, and we give things and we try to figure things out, Lord, but we know you've got a plan, and, and Lord, we just seek to, to follow your will in that, Lord, and um, we accept whatever you have for us, Lord. Lord, we pray for our, our family here today, the Lord, that, um, that have had losses, Lord, and um, we just lift them up, Lord. Sometimes it's... Uh, it's a loss, and sometimes it's just it's a blessing, but still there's always holes left, Lord, when somebody moves on. Even when they're moving to a better place, we're still left here, Lord, to just um, pray for peace and comfort there, Lord. We pray for our, our country, Lord, and our leaders in this country, Lord, and our leaders in the world, Lord, that they, um, they become or that they are godly people and that they'll seek you, Lord, and that they seek answers from you and not from men, Lord. And too many times we get caught into that trap. Lord, I just take a moment for unanswered joys and unanswered prayers, Lord, that um, we may we may lift them up by independently, Lord, and perhaps just set for a moment and to hear your answers, Lord. Lord, we bring this all to you this morning. In Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll have our scripture, and uh, it's Genesis 1 and uh, to Genesis 2, 3. You all stand if you're able. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate the water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. 
God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and gathered the waters he called seas. And God said, saw that it was, uh, that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in them, according to their various kinds, and it was so. And the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God said it was good, and there was evening, and it was morning the third day. And God said, let there be light in the vault of the sky to separate the day from night, and let, there, let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be the lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so, and God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. And he also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw it, it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures. Let the birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with it which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God said, saw that it was good. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food and it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work that he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the above work of creating that he had done. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good job, Gordon. At least there weren't too many big, hard to pronounce words in there. Yeah. Thank you for standing for God's word this morning. It's quite a story, and really the story goes on. <clears throat> but in my Bible, that takes like four pages of the Bible. That's all. Just, just this much right here to explain this, this story, this creation story. There's a couple things in there that he read. And he said, and God, and God created it, and, it, and it's, I think it said something in that version like, and it was so, period. 
My mind said, you know, God created it, and, and that is how it happened, period. No more, no less. That's how it happened. And the other thing that we've repeated through there several times, six times. Six times he said, and it was so, period. And then he also said, it is good. God saw it, and it is good. Six different times through that story he said that, that it is good. He even said it is very good. So if our Bible was just this thick, and that was the only story in the Bible, there would be no need for preaching, would there? be pretty simple. be really simple. So what about these other, in my book, there's 1,996 pages of other stuff in here. What about that? There's all kinds of stuff in this other part. There's laws, there's regulations, there's consequences. There's judgment, there's forgiveness, there's love, there's hate, a little bit of everything in this book. The title of my message this morning was, It is Good, or It it Was Good, But, and that brings us to the but. If Gordon would read just a little bit farther into chapter 2, I think it's verses 15, chapter 2, verse 15. said, the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But, here it comes, here comes the but. And I'm the guy who always sees the but in things. The other side of something. You know, if if I give you a compliment, I'll probably give you a compliment, but you could have done this a little bit better. Or if something's bad, I'm the guy who says, but... But, you know, there's another side of this deal. So there's always a but. Well, this but isn't just that... It does away with all of this great story, and it was good. And it was good, but. So God puts this but in there. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to stand and watch, or to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him. You may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. So God put put this in there. Here we had a perfect story, and then all of a sudden he creates man and woman in his image, but he gives us a choice, and that's where the but comes in involved. So if you turn to chapter 3, we're going to move right through this Bible pretty fast. We're up to chapter 3 now. I want to read this. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the fruit of any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat of the fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said we must not eat it or even touch it. If so, we will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool of the evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. 
You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you will give birth. And you will desire to control your husband and he will rule over you. And to the man he said, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you, you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. That's quite a story. <clears throat> About, the, about sin. It's the first sin, I would say. But I, th I wonder about this deal about how the serpent approached Eve. You know, was he, if you want something from somebody, like I wanted to butcher a beef the other day, so I called Dan, or I texted him, I think, kind of impersonal. But most of the time when I call someone, and I'm wanting something. I don't just come right out and just say, hey, I, I want to process a beef. I'll call, ask about maybe the family, the weather, do a little bit of small talk and kind of build up something and, you know, think that I get an inroad with them. And then I'll ask, ask them something. Well, I wonder if that isn't what the serpent was doing here with Eve because he asked her a question that he knew the answer to and he knew that she knew it. I think he was just making small talk, getting an in on her. He says, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? He knew that they could eat the fruit from any of the trees except for one. So Eve just, she, she corrects him. But the seed had already been planted. The doubt became in her mind. And he jumps right on that, the devil does. He says, oh, surely you won't die. Surely you're, that, that won't happen. You know, you're going, to be, you're going to be like God if you eat that. That's why he doesn't want you to eat it. You're not going to die. So he deceives her. It says that the woman was convinced that she saw, she wanted, and she took it. She saw that it was very beautiful. It looked delicious. So she took it. And then Adam took some of it too. Now being a guy, I'm kind of like Adam. I want to blame it on someone else. And Adam, he tries. But it clearly says that Adam was there with her. I, I kind of wonder if he wasn't even there and heard the conversation and he just went along with it. Because he knew better too. So he's not held any different than Eve in this deal. So we move on. And God calls them out. And I can just see this. Or in my mind. Three little kids standing here. Satan, the serpent. Adam and Eve. And there's a quick judgment by God on them instantly. I mean, he calls them out and, and uh, um, condemns the, the serpent. And says, you know, that you're never going to do more than strike Strike the heel. You're going to crawl around on the ground the rest of your life. And that's all the, the only power you're ever going to have is to be able to, to strike out and strike the heel. You're never going to be able to kill someone. You're just going to be able to strike the heel. You're never really going to have any power. And he said to the woman that, you know, because you've done this, you're going to, one of the greatest things is new birth. But there's going to be pain involved with that. And to the man, he calls him out. You know, he blew it. He blew it. He had a great deal in the garden. All he had to do was tend it. And now he's got to work the rest of his life. And he's going to be dust to dust and ashes to ashes. God put him right, right in his place. So that first sin. It started a whole cycle. It was good, but sin came into the world. 
by our own choosing, by Eve's choosing, by Adam's choosing, by my choosing. It enters the world. The whole cycle gets started. So today, that's still a pretty good example of how sin happens to me. And I don't know about you, but if you was Eve or if you was Adam, I don't really know if it matters. If you was Eve or you was Adam and the serpent came up and talked to you at that time, would you say, oh, oh, I just would not eat the fruit? I don't know. It was delicious. It looked good. I wonder if she hadn't even looked at it before. They hadn't even looked at the tree. It's at the center of the garden. But perhaps if God said, you can't have it, you just don't even pay any attention to it. But the devil was be able to come in and say, oh, maybe you ought to take a look at that. Maybe it's going to offer you just a little something, change things just a little bit. And then on, that may have been the first time that, that they even looked at the fruit. I don't know. Wouldn't it be nice if, if we was never tempted? If we was never challenged that way? But what would you do if you was Eve? It's pretty easy to stand here and say, no, nope, God said not to do it. I'm not going to do it. But how many of us have seen little kids when you tell them not to do it? That's exactly what they go and do. Exactly. It's, it's a temptation. It's a challenge. I know in my life, There are times when I am connected to God and I feel very, very close. And I just, it's a high, I suppose. That's probably what druggies have. And it, it's, it's a high and I just love being there. But I'm going to be honest, I'm not always there all the time. And it's because something's in my life, something's got me distracted or bothering me or it's something I have chosen to do. It looked good. It felt good. I was convinced. I was convinced. And I took it. I took it. Now you know that the, the, um, Eve and Adam thought that they would die if they ate that. And the devil said, surely you won't die. Well, they didn't die. They didn't physically die. But there was a great loss. There was a great loss. There was a death of some sort. They, they lost that relationship with God. And that's what happens to me. I love this high I'm on when I'm connected. And I just feel really, really close to God. And then something from the outside or something from the inside of me catches me. And I miss that. And, and it's a loss. It's a death. Now, what do you do when that happens? When you're tempted, you know, it's nice if the devil just comes right up to you and says, Clint, eat this fruit. It's not always like that. You know, it's pretty easy, it's easy for us to avoid the murder and idolatry. Idolatry is a little tricky sometimes, I guess, but um, there are some sins that's very, very obvious. But then there's many kind of under the table or underlying ones that um, perhaps we're not even aware of at times, and then perhaps we are. What do we do with that? And when we're tempted, do we, do we dwell on it? Do we think about it? Does it begin to consume us? Do we hang on to it? Do we resist it a little bit? Do we just, well, okay, it, that's, that's all right, but, but it's not... I, I'm just, you know, it's there, but it's, it's no big deal. Does that ever happen? We need to resist it, totally resist it. We need to throw it away. We need to get rid of it. We need to run from it if we have to. I'm just saying, sometimes it's harder than it sounds. If you think... <clears throat> And even when I'm on that high, and if you're there and you're the person who thinks you're there all the time, I'm, I admire you. And there's many, many people here that I admire. But I'm just saying, 
The serpent is very clever. He can deceive you. Be, be very, very careful. In Romans 3.23, Paul writes that all of sin falls short of the glory of God. And I don't want to be a downer on anybody. I want everybody to be on this high that I get to enjoy once in a while. That's where we all desire to be. But be careful. If you think you're sin free, you might want to check again. Sometimes it's hard to hard to tell the difference. Pride is a good one. I think that we should be pri- we should be we should have be proud of ourselves and and have confidence in ourselves. But you have to be careful. The devil takes very many or many things that are good, and he twists it a little bit, and it can become it can become a problem. But the answer to this, moving on past chapter 3 and the first sin, go ahead and go to Romans 3, 23, or Romans chapter 3. I said we was going to go through the whole Bible. You know, things changed when the New Testament came around when Jesus was born and Jesus died. And, and I just, I, I picked this one, but it's wrote through here many, many times about what Jesus does for us. Romans 3, starting in 22, it says, We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone is sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life. When they believe. Shedding his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. Who sinned before Jesus came. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do at this present time. Now that Jesus has has died and risen again. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness for he himself is fair and just. And he declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. You believe in Jesus? You turn from your sin and God declares you righteous. So that's the answer. Skipping on back to page 2200 or whatever, and Revelations. You know, Paul wrote something about the present time. And that's what we're in now, is the present time. That, that Jesus came and, and is the ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us in our sins. And we can live free of that sin. But in Revelations 1, verses 4 through 8, John writes, the, this letter is from John in the seven churches to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace be to you from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come. That would be God. The one who is, the one always was, and the one still to come. From the sevenfold spirit before his throne, being the Holy Spirit, and from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness to, the, to all these things. The first to rise from the dead, the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made us a kingdom of priests for God his Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning. Mighty one. Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. It's something that we should be excited for. Turn it on back in Revelations 21, 5 through 8. And the one sitting on the throne said, and this would be God talking to Paul. Look, I am making everything new. Paul's just, or I'm sorry, John has just seen this, this the vision of hev- heaven coming to earth. 
and everything's being made new. And then he said to me, write this down for what I Omega, the end, to all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of water of life. And all who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. There's an end coming. When Jesus comes, the end of this time, there's an end to it. And here's another but in verse 8. For all who are victorious will inherit all these blessings. But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars, their fate is the fiery lake of burning sulfur. So here's another but. You're a believer or an unbeliever? Jesus is coming again, and there's going to be an end. In Revelations 22, 12, sometimes you just can't say it any better than it's written. Jesus says, as John writes, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Paul writes, Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Now, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. Look out. He's calling you out. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. John finishes the spirit and his bride say, come. The spirit and his bride say, come. Um, let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. And I solemnly declare to everyone who hears the words of prophecy written in this book, if anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. And if anyone removes any of the words from this book of prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city that are described in this book. He who is faithful witness to all these things says, and that would be Jesus, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. You know, for, the, for over a year, Jeff was preaching about the times. And being prepared. And I've heard it. I've heard it on the radio. And I don't know when that's going to happen. I know it didn't happen yesterday. And it hasn't happened yet. And it may happen in the next two words. And it may happen a thousand years from now. I'm, I'm all right either way. But if you're a believer, we can be excited about that. There's nothing really, really scary about it. it we can be anxious as in anticipating anticipating and Maybe even shaking in our boots with enthusiasm when you're pumped up and you're excited. But if you're an unbeliever, it's a different type of anxiousness that helped. But it's scary. I can remember as a kid, Revelation was kind of a taboo book. And it's kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, you can't touch that. And There's nothing to be afraid of. I worry in our churches, and it can, it can happen here, that there, there can be people sitting in our pews, and maybe they sat there for 50 years. That the devil can still come in and plant a little seed once in a while. And what you do with that, do you dwell on that? Am I good enough? You fall, you fall for them things. 
I worry about that. I worry about the person. Uh, maybe they're watching. Uh, maybe somebody's going to watch this two years from now. That they're looking for something. They're looking. They're thirsty. And Jesus just says, come. The answer is simple. You've got to keep it really simple for me. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe that he died and believe that he's alive. That he shed his blood. He paid the price, price for me. Believe that. Believe that. It can be that simple. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you started out with creation, Lord. And you spoke and it was, just as you said. And it was so. And you saw that it was good. And you saw that it was very good. And then Eve and Adam, and then Clint and a few others, Lord. We messed it up, Lord. We make, you gave us the ability to choose, Lord. You want us to freely love you, Lord. And Lord, what, what great reward there is in that, Lord. But Lord, this sin that, that sneaks up on us, that we fall fall into once in a while, Lord, this grave that um, we get caught in, Lord. We're just so, so thankful, Lord, that for that um, forgiveness, for the blood that was shed, the sacrifice that was made by you. Lord, I lift up any unbeliever who, who hears this word, Lord, that is, you know, maybe, maybe just doubting a little bit. Or maybe just doesn't even know, Lord, that um, if they're hungry, if they're missing something, Lord, and perhaps that's you, Lord, that they just be willing to reach out, Lord, to, to ask you into their heart, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you put a believer beside them, Lord, to help them, to reach out a hand, Lord, that they be willing to, to reach out and, uh, and to share it, Lord. This anxiousness, this anticipation, this excitement, Lord, it can be contagious, Lord. We just want that. We just all want to be in heaven, Lord. We're all going to get there one way or another, Lord, through a physical death, but it's all coming through you, Jesus. And if you come again and take us believers, that's, that's just great. And Lord, but Lord, we, just, we all want them to be in heaven. Lord, I just pray that you give, you give us believers the ability to and the desire to share what we have, Lord, with others so that we can all get to heaven through you. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. One, does this song have three verses or four? Or we, well, maybe we just cut it down to the first and fourth one. I don't know. Well, we can sing them all because I really, really like this song. I think we should stand and we should sing them all. There's something about singing and shouting. And you know, if you want to sing, you want to shout, do that. If you don't want to, do that. It's not between you and me. It's between you and God. And that's what we're doing here. Let's, let's sing. You do what you want to. Raise your hands or sing and shout.
we get to shout. Amen. We get to shout. Let's be excited when we leave this place. Let's take it with us and spread it. Do not be deceived this week. You've got the power to beat it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.